Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Dr. Andrea from the Royal Marsden NHS Foundation Trust. Welcome. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. So you've been involved with the ORBIT trial, which assesses how to help uh, patients with gastrointestinal symptoms after pelvic radiation. Talk us through, if you will, some of the issues to do with pelvic radiation. Uh, well, this is a, quite a challenging topic because there's been a, a revolution in the way we treat people for cancer with huge numbers of people living who wouldn't expect to have been alive 15 or 20 years ago. And the biggest problem is that lots of them run into problems or get side effects of the treatment. And there hasn't been any emphasis on treating the side effects. And this is what this trial was about. It was to show that actually one can make a huge difference for a very neglected group of people who most doctors believe are untreatable. And what are some of the side effects? Well, th this study uh, focused on cancer in the pelvis. And all cancers in the pelvis uh, develop, but they're surrounded by normal tissues. And as a result of radiotherapy, it's, in it's inevitable that the surrounding tissues get treated to some degree. And so it's the treatment to the healthy tissues which surround the cancer, which then causes problems long term. I mean, when, where, where radiotherapy is given, it's designed to kill. But further out, where the dose is lower, uh, in the surrounding tissues, it doesn't kill, but it damages. And people pay the cost of that. And how was it that you came to deal with this particular group of patients? To start with, it was, it was a bit of a daunting prospect, because uh, as doctors, we're told that this is a hopeless group of patients with very impossible symptoms for which nothing can be done. But seeing more and more of them in our clinic, it became really clear that a lot of concepts uh, about this condition are wrong. First of all, patients would say to me when I saw them in the clinic, were, hadn't they had fantastic treatment and weren't they unlucky to have turned up with these really difficult side effects? And that's one concept which is wrong because it's not that the patients who get the side effects who are unlucky, but it's the ones who don't get the side effects who are in fact lucky. Because the nature of radiation treatment is that normal tissues around the tumour will inevitably be damaged. And what is really, really needed is a uh, mind shift to say that instead of trying to deal with people who say that they have problems, is to think that the treatments we give are so good for cancer but they're radical treatments and inevitably people were going to pay the price of it. It's this concept that bowel symptoms don't develop as a result of the radiotherapy itself, but that they develop as a result of changes in the physiology of the bowel, which has been induced by the radiotherapy, suddenly makes this group of patients eminently treatable, or at least their symptoms eminently treatable. Now yours is an algorithm approach. Tell us exactly what you mean by that and how the trial was set up. These patients have very complicated symptoms. Um, and one of the reasons that they have been neglected in the past is that they appear with all these symptoms and people throw their hands up in horror and says, how are we supposed to deal with that? So what we've adopted is a very systematic approach. We identified 23 different symptoms that people get after they've had treatment for the radiotherapy affecting the bowel. So things like diarrhea, incontinence, wind, whole series of things, but 23 of them. And for each symptom, we've thought about what are the possible causes for that symptom? And we've come up with a list of possible causes. And for each of our 23 symptoms, we developed a structured approach where you identify the symptom, you identify the tests people need, and on the basis of the test results, if they're positive or negative, you define specific treatments. And that's what this trial was about. So what did you find out? Well, first of all, we found that people were getting uh, many symptoms. Secondly, that uh, for those symptoms, there were several causes predisposing to that symptom. And that thirdly, directed treatment using the algorithm is incredibly effective. So what are some of the implications from the study for clinical practice? Up to now, people have had cancer. They've had fantastic treatment. They're grateful to be alive, but they're left with very difficult, debilitating symptoms which lock them in the house, they can't get out. And people have said to them, well, sorry, mate, you know, this is as good as it gets. At least your cancer's gone. 
And what we've shown is that that's not good enough. That actually on the basis of quite a lot of published data before, we've put together an algorithm which is very logical and makes sense. And that we've shown that um, a nurse or a doctor can apply this algorithm. It's a very simple thing to do and as a result people benefit. So it is now no longer acceptable A, to ignore the fact that people might have symptoms and B, do anything about it. So Dr. Andreev, what next? What does the future hold for you and your group? The next step is to try and modify the disease process because we're dealing with symptoms but the underlying changes which have happened because of the radiotherapy are still ongoing. And uh, we've got a number of studies planned and there are a lot of very exciting drugs which are uh, emerging which could change the underlying pathophysiology, the, the, the abnormal physiology which drives the process which causes these symptoms. Well thank you very much indeed for joining us today and for sharing some of those very interesting findings from your study. No, it's a huge pleasure. Thank you for inviting me.